and then this is point B now. Okay, so this is X is equal to zero, X is equal to L, V, M, theta, Y. Okay, so over here, the shear force, we don't know at point A. At point B, we know that the shear force is equal to what? Zero. Right? And then at mo the moment at point A, it's not equal to zero. Why the moment is not equal to zero is because for the fact that the beam is at this position because there's a reacting moment. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is the beam is not swinging downwards, is it? It's staying down there. So for it to stay up there, you need to have a reaction down here. Okay. So let's say we put a, a load permanently down here, P, for example. The beam is still staying down there. For the beam to stay down there means there were there is a reacting moment. Right? There's a reacting moment at point A. That's why the beam stays down there. However, at point B, M is equal to zero. Okay. And then theta at point A is equal to zero. Okay. At point B is not equal or oh, wrong mode, sorry. Theta is equal to zero. Down here, M is also equal to zero. Theta is not equal to so theta over here. What do I mean by theta? Let me elaborate. Okay. Theta, if you look at how the beam will deflect, so this is how the beam will deflect. I will use a different color. So this is how the beam will deflect. The def deflect. Okay. If we put a load over here. Okay. So this is how the beam will deflect. So theta is basically. If I were to select a point down here. Okay. If I draw a horizontal line, right, and this horizontal line will have a tangent to the deflection over here. This is your theta. Okay, so if you look at point A, right, the horizontal line is straight, the beam is also straight at one end, that's why theta is equal to zero. Then over here, the last one, deflection at A is equal to zero, deflection at B is equal to zero. Okay, so all this is known as a uh, boundary condition. Now coming back to our so I've just done a boundary condition for, I mean, these are the regular cases. I mean, they are most regular, simply supported cantilever beam, and this is overhanging beam. Okay, these are the boundary uh, conditions for overhanging beam. Okay, so wh what we are going to do is we are going to determine the shear force and bending moment equations. And we are also going to sketch and label the shear force And bending moment. Someone has a question. Due to equipment condition, moment is zero. Uh, when moment is equal to zero, means there's no uh, reaction. Okay, does not mean that it's equilibrium. Okay, so let let me explain again. So if we look at the simply supported beam, okay, we look at the simply supported beam. At point A, moment is equal to zero is because when we remove the support at point B, the structure will rotate, right? So there is no resistance moment. When there's no resistance moment, moment is equal to zero. Azam, is that okay? Okay. 
Right, so we are going to determine the shear force and sketch and uh, label the shear force and bending moment. Diagram. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to copy the smaller, I'm going to do a smaller image of this diagram. So you can all can see when we are doing it. Okay. Now this topic, this is an easy uh, loading condition. Later on, we do more complicated one. But students find this uh, more challenging, not because of the analysis. It's because of integration of physics and math together. Okay, I know when you do in college, you don't need to form the equation. Okay, in this case, we have to form the equation because only when you form the equation, then you can calculate the slope and deflection, which, I'm, which again, I'll not be doing down here. Okay, so let's, let's look at how, how to start a problem like this. Okay. So we are we are going to first determine the uh, reactions at point B and C first. Okay, so that's the that's the first thing we're going to do. So we're going to determine the reaction at point B and point C. So again, we have to construct free body diagram. X, Y, rotation about Z. Isn't it nice to come back to 2D world again, right? So we know that over here, we will have our uh, by over here we have our cy okay we have our uh, p down here we have our p down here and over here exactly at the center we have omega okay l minus 2a okay. so i'm going to do uh, the, the, the simple version okay, of the static analysis. So we know based on uh, symmetrical loading and geometry about the y-axis so what do i mean by that if we were to put our y-axis at the center right right the left hand side is equal to the right hand side okay so when this is the case so therefore by is equal to CY, okay? Then positive is going up. As I mentioned about forces, about Y is equal to zero, okay? Then all, all we need to do now is to write out the static analysis, okay? So uh, minus P minus uh, omega L minus 2A, Okay, minus P plus by BY plus by CY is equal to zero. Okay, so we have two BY. Why is it two BY? Because BY is equal to CY, right? So this is equal to uh, two P plus by omega L minus two A. 
So therefore, by is equal to p plus by uh, omega over 2. L minus by 2A. Okay, so we have this. So this is also equal to our CY. Okay, so any steps that you do, you have to determine the reactions at any points, not, not at, at, at the points where there is support. Okay, so the next one, this is where we start forming our determine. Shear force and bending moment equation. And this is where we're going to apply the positive shear and positive bending moment. Okay, and so let me copy. Now, this procedure that I'm showing you now, okay. Uh, you can use for any analysis again, okay, on beam uh, uh, beam design, okay. So let me cut and go to the next page first. Okay. And then let me get the diagram across so you can see the diagram also. So before we start doing the forming the shear force and bending moment diagram, we, 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 we produce a table, okay? We produce a, a table. A table will able to show you which one are uh, equation, which one is a constant, okay? So we are going to, uh, so we are going to form our, uh, our sections. Okay, so we are going to have at point A, right? And from point A to point B. And then we have to determine what's going on at point B. Okay. Then point B to point C. And then at point C. And then we're going to determine from point C to point D. And then we're going to find out what it's going to be at point D. Okay. Then we're going to generate another uh, column. So this one will be our limits. So what do I mean by my, my uh, limit? So this is X is equal to zero. Right, because it's at point A. This is zero x to A. Right, so that is from point A to point B. Right, the next one is x is equal to A. Right, so A to x from B to C is A to x and up to uh, L minus A. At, at point C, X is equal to L minus A, right? And from C to D is uh, L minus A, X to L. And at point D is where X is equal to L. Okay? Then you form another... Uh, Okay, you form another column, and this is your shear force. Okay, this column belongs to your shear force. And then the last column, okay, which we don't know yet, bending moment. Okay, so it's your bending moment.
so what I want to highlight down here, right? If it's at a specific point, like x is equal to zero, x is equal to a, x is equal to l minus a, x is equal to 